It is Carl Brown for Guitar Lessons 365.com. I have another Christmas classic, beautiful song, I'll Be Home for Christmas. This is really kind of based off the Bing Crosby version, uh, which I love. Uh, it's great. So this has a lot of jazzy stuff in it. That little intro, I'm pretty much kind of, kind of doing it pretty close, the little guitar intro that you hear on the track, and then the one in the middle of the song as well, I'll be doing that. And then we have um, the actual chorus of the song, which are a combination, there's a guitar that's kind of doing a lot of like, kind of just moving around quite a bit. It's kind of arpeggiating through the chords the first time through. Um, but when we get to the actual song and Bing starts singing, I'm actually just kind of sticking with the overall harmony. It's a really cool, the, everything from the, the choir to the guitar to the orchestra, everything is kind of creating the, this really cool and, um, harmony underneath it, really jazzy. So uh, I've been emulating that uh, pretty closely, but I'm trying not to make it too overly difficult. All right, so we're going to jump into that. If you, uh, by the way, if you haven't already, please check out My Guitar Academy. You'll see the description in the, in the link below. Uh, my Guitar Academy contains all my guitars, uh, my horses. There's no horses in the Academy. All of my courses... My guitar courses, from complete beginner stuff to more advanced stuff and technique and courses and technique and improvisation, ear training and theory and guitar tone. So please go check it out to get a free seven day trial just by clicking that link. All right, so let's jump into it here. We are in standard tuning and I have this really cool intro here. you don't have to do. You can just kind of simplify the chords if you want, but I think it's uh, really, um, you can just go. And, uh, it, so those chords would just be a G chord. Uh, basically the, the first four chords of the verse when we get to the verse. So you can just play that if you don't want to. Do these, but it sounds really cool side. So, how am I doing this? We're going to start with this G chord down here. I'm adding this uh, third fret there on the low E string, and then I'm with my thumb, and then I'm playing the fifth fret there on the fifth, uh, uh, fourth fret on the G, and third fret on the B. And then I'm going to take a melody up the B string to the fifth fret on the B, seventh, ten. So you hear that. And then when we get there, we're going to have this. Very, very cool. So we have the 7th fret on the A, 8th fret on the D, 9th fret on the G, and then 8th fret on the B. And then we have the, after you strum that chord, that's the melody note, right? Because that's the high note in the chord. Then we go back down to pick the G string, 9th fret, and then lift up that note that's on the 8th fret on the B. So then when you pick the B string again, it's the 7th fret, because I'm doing a bar here. And then back down on the 8th, so it's that little melody. So, so you can do that melody like that, you keep the chord there. Now from there, we're going to have this. So this chord is 10th fret on the A and the D, 9th on the G, 10th on the B. Then move it up to the 12th fret. And then um, this is going to be a bar at the 12th fret, 
And we're gonna play the 12th fret on the A, 14 on the D, that 12th fret on the G, and then the um, 15th there on the B string. So just those four middle strings. And then move the melody down to the 13th fret on the B. So. And then end it with this. Oh, yes. So what we're doing here is we're playing the uh, full bar at the 10th fret. And then we're going to play the 12th fret on the uh, A string. We got the 10th fret there on the D. The 11th fret there on the G string. And then the 12th fret there. The uh, 13 in the chord. Makes it a little D13 is what it is. And there we have it. D13, yay. So you want that note to be the top of it. It really ends it well. So that's just the intro, intro to the song, uh, but it, it was it's really gorgeous on the album, so I kind of wanted to get that transcribed for you. And now we have when the vocals come in. So now the simplified version of that intro, we can just do these first four chords of the. So we can do that as an intro if you don't want to do all that. So it just be like a G major chord. So that's, I'm doing that. You can do this as a regular G major if you want. I liked it a little bit more mellow doing it as the bar chord version of G. Um, but you can just play as a regular G major chord and it would actually make it easier to get to the next chord. All right, so what it is is a G major. And then what it happens after that is we get a, a B flat diminished seventh chord in third inversion. So technically, that means this is going to be spelled as a double A flat, not a G. But let's make it easy and just call it a G, all right? And don't worry about it. So basically, what I'm playing on top of this G here is I'm borrowing, I'm borrowing the second fret there on the D across to the B string. So I have the second fret on the D and the second fret on the B, and the third fret there on the G string. Now that's all you really need. And if you happen to get the high open high E string, that sounds fine. But really, you just need it across to the B string. So I'm muting that A string with the bottom of my middle finger. So this is that B diminished chord in third inversion. So this is an A double flat in the bass. A B flat diminished chord. Diminished seven. So we have this. Then it goes to an A minor 7. So you can play that as an open A string, second fret on the D, open G, first fret on the B, third fret on the high E. And then there's a little orchestral line that goes. So it starts out with this top note here on the A minor 7 chord. And then when it goes to the other lines, it grabs a D7. So we have an open D string, second fret on the G, first fret on the B, second fret on the high E. So we have that, and then that makes that a D7 chord, D dominant seven. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this top note and move it down to the first fret. So in order to do that, we have to bar those first and second string there to keep all the other notes the same. And that makes it a D minor seven. And then back to that D7. Just basically, you're just basically. So it goes back to the D7. So we have that A minor 7, D, D7, D minor 7, back to the D7. Obviously, you hear the guitar track underneath this. It's a lot more active. Um, he's just kind of, he's just kind of, he's kind of, he's doing some. Uh, I'm not 
worried about all that. I'm just trying to get the harmony now to that. The second time through this part, he just kind of does more strumming. But uh, so we have this G, the B diminished third inversion, A minor seven, then D seven, D minor seven to D seven, and then so that's that. Uh, And then we have this part. You can plan on me. So it's got some very jazzy stuff in there, so I think it sounds great. That this era is just fantastic orchestrations and arrangements of songs. Um, so uh, we have this G uh, six chord. So you're gonna play that. Easiest way to do it and sounds good is just to take um, the 3rd fret on the low E, 5th fret on the D, 4th fret on the G, and 5th fret there on the, on the B string, that, that's what makes it 6. So I'm muting the A string there with the bottom of my index finger. So what that is right there is an E dominant 7 flat 9 chord. Resolves to an E7. So we have this open E string, 7th fret on the A, 6 on the D, 7 on the G, and 6 on the B. That 6 is that flat 9. The 6 on the B. And then what you're going to resolve that is to a, a normal E7 shape. So that's the open E, 7 on the A string, 6 on the D, 7 on the G, 5 on the so we have this. You can plan on me. Now, once again, we have one of these kind of orchestral things that goes on that moves the chords around. So um, that's just an A, A minor seven again to that same. I'm sorry, we haven't done this chord yet. The B minor seven flat five. So that's the second fret on the A string. You can have the open D as well if you want. Then the second fret on the G, third fret on the B string, and then first fret on the high E. So that's a B minor seven flat five. So we have this. And then we get to an A minor chord in first inversion. So that's just hold a regular A minor, hopefully you know that, and then we have just gonna play the th add the third fret there on, on the A string with your pinky, and then back to the A minor seven, which you can at first if you want just play as a, without the note on top, just to open on E, but make sure you get that G string open. So it does. And then when we go to the next, uh, when you start the next line, it stays on that A minor seven. So to make it sound interesting, you can go back to holding that note on the high E string. So it's just a different voicing of it, but it might make it sound a little uh, like it's still moving around, even though we're staying on the same harmony. So we got this so far. We're gonna have this. Please have snow and mistletoe and presents on the tree. So this is a little bit, a little simpler here. We're gonna start with that A minor seven. I like the one with the when we start the vocals come in. Remember, I start add that third fret on the high E. Have snow. And I like this voicing of a D6 chord here instead of the. You can play it like that if you want, which is the open D, second fret on the G, open B, second fret on the high E. So you get to stay in that area, which is great. But I like this. Putting that sixth on top, I think, really sounds good. It's also really easy to play. So it's the open D string, and then this uh, you're going to bar across the seventh fret of the G, B, and then. 
we have Please have snow And Mistletoe So that right there is just You can just do a G major To a, a D major chord With F sharp in the bass So put that um, thumb there The second thumb of the low E string And then from there Go to an E minor 7 chord and I like this voicing, sounds nice and full. Um, that's the open E string, second fret on the uh, A and the D, open G, and then the third fret on the B and the high E. So we have, please have snow and mistletoe. I did it as a bar chord, but you can just do it as a regular G if you want. They keep holding that E minor seven and present. So this is an A dominant seven chord. So it's just like an A major chord, but just the G string is open. So I'm just on the open A string, second fret on the D, open G, second fret on the B, and you can have a high E in there if you want as well. Open high E. So we have this. And on the tree. Then it's a B7 sus4. A B7. So we just play open D string, second fret on the G, first fret on the B, and uh, we have this G up here, which makes it the sus. So that's the third fret of the high E, and then resolve that to the regular D7 chord we did earlier with the second fret on the high E. And then that's the whole first section of the song that's done there. And then we get to the section, uh, second section, which has a lot of the exact same chords up until the third line. So it sounds like this. You'll see uh, when I get to that C minor chord, you'll hear a change there. So we have this. Christmas Eve will find me where the love light gleams. So the first two lines there, first two lines of the lyrics, same exact thing we did in the previous verse there. And um, But then we get to um, the third line there where he says, I'll be home for Christmas. So it's kind of like the chorus, really. So we have A minor 7. So we start that the same way, the third line, just like we waited. Please have snow and mistletoe. We start out with A minor 7. That's kind of where we're at in this second time through. So that A minor 7 goes to a C minor chord. So I'll be home for So that's that after that C minor we go to that B minor 7 flat 5 that we did earlier. Which looks like a you know a D minor chord here adding the second fret there on the A string. And then we're going to resolve that to a an E uh, a, a E7 chord, E dominant seven. So open E string, second fret on the A, open D, first fret on the G, third fret on the B, open high E string. Go back to that A minor seven. If only to an A diminished here. So this is going to be A diminished seven. Open A string. Uh, fourth fret there on the D. Fifth fret on the G, and fourth fret on the B. And we're going to resolve that to a. To a D7 chord. And I like this one up here. Because you can get that high E string in there. That A note up top.
top. So after this, hitting the four middle strings for that A diminished chord, do a full, uh, do a bar at the uh, fifth fret there. So that that will, and then you're gonna play. So that bar at the fifth fret, you're gonna be pick, picking the uh, D string on the fifth. I'm sorry, the fifth fret on the A string there. That's what you got in the bar. Seventh fret on the D. That fifth fret on the G. The seventh fret on the B, and then the high E string. And make sure you get that note in there, and then resolve it to that G major, which I like the G major, the bar chord version. We're trying to make this sound as soft as possible, so we got. We have this little transition which is a variation that we do in the intro and then it goes through the exact same chords again um, basically it's two more sections just in the exact same order we just did just repeated um, and like I said the guitar is kind of laying back a little bit more upbeat but uh, just playing chords mostly but this little transition we have in there is pretty nice too it looks like this So it's abbreviated and it uses slightly different harmony. We started the same way. So this is in the middle of the song, we transition back to start over again to everything we've done so far. So instead of the intro, although we have this, that same G and that same melody off of it. Now here's where things change up. Before we did this, but now instead here, we're gonna do this. So we have the open A string, 7th fret on the D, 5th fret on the G, and then 8th uh, fret there on the B. Then play 5 on the B, and then back to 7, 8, so we have this. So that melody is on the B string. And then from there we're going to do this. Beautiful. So we have this 9th fret on the A, 10th on the D, 8th on the G, and then 10th on the B. So you play those together, and then move that note up on the B string to the 12th fret and milk it, and then start over. Exchange the second way, second time through, uh, but uh, at least in one of the times through. But anyway, it's very, very similar, and you can just do the same chords there that we did the first two sections. So we have that intro, and then we have those first two sections. Um, then we have that little variation of the intro. And if you wanted to, like I said, if you wanted to cheat that, you can just do the G to an A, uh, to the G, to an A minor 7, to a D7, and then go back to the song. So, uh, But I, I love those little sections. It's my favorite part of the, 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 the tune. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. It is a fantastic Christmas classic. Not a beginner version of this. I get it. Um, but when you have those really cool jazz arrangements uh, of stuff going on, man, to really give it it's due. You got to kind of try to emulate them as close as possible, even though if it's an orchestra or a choir doing it. Um, so some of those sections can be a little bit challenging, but they sound just gorgeous. So hopefully that'll inspire you to which at them a little bit so you can get them up in um, up to speed. And plus, you got a few weeks till Christmas. You got plenty of time, man. Come on. All right. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you again soon for guitarlessons365.com.